Hey guys, this is Blake with Feeling to Function, and I just made a video kind of just to maybe get a laugh, but it wasn't really very funny, um, on everything in my gym bag, and I was going to go back now and talk about some of the stuff I pulled out of my gym bag and tell you what it was for, what you would use it for, if you should get it, um, and just hopefully this will help you to be better prepared in the weight room. Um, to perform better in the weight room and to prevent injuries. So let me get out a couple things and we'll get started. Hey guys, uh, real quick before I get into this video, I just wanted to say there's a couple things that I don't have in my gym bag that you probably should. One would be a weightlifting belt, which will really help to secure your back, your um, core, and just everything. And it's just a safe practice to use a weightlifting belt, especially as you start to lift heavier weight. I use one that is at my gym that I really like. I have my own, but um, it's just it's not broken in, and I just prefer the one at my gym. Two would be some type of foam roller or the stick. Let me grab one real quick so I can show you what I mean. So this is called the stick. What you do is you take it and you can rub it on your calves or your quads or whatever, and it's really good to hit maybe a tight spot where you might be cramping up or just have a sore muscle. Um, and then this is called a foam roller. And what you do is lie on it and roll across it and it'll pop your back. It's really good for your hamstrings. Um, and it's just a good tool to um, help you recover so that you can perform better in the gym. Now, even if you don't care that much about recovery, those are great tools because when your legs don't hurt, your lats aren't tight, um, you're going to be able to pull more weight and that's going to lead to better progress. So taking the time outside the gym to take care of your body is something that you really need to prioritize. I know when I'm stretching and um, doing mobility work and stuff, I perform a lot better than when I stopped doing it. For instance, I had a pretty killer leg session this Friday um, and I was just busy Friday night. I didn't take any time to stretch or use my foam roller or anything and today I was super stiff all day. Whereas if I had taken the time to maybe take 10-15 minutes out of my night, stretch, foam roll, everything, I feel a lot better the next day. So just taking those little little extra measure, you put all this work in, in the gym, put all this work in, in the kitchen, just take that little extra step, put a little work in to take care of your body as well. And then three, I have these at my gym as well, so I don't have my own, but if you haven't tried bench pressing with bands or anything, that's a really good tool to increase your bench press, um, as well as you can use them for mobility work and training. But let's get into this video and show you what I did have in my gym bag. Um, that I pack around with me all the time that are absolute must-haves in my opinion. Alright, so this is what we're looking at. Um, wrist straps, so all these really are, they just go on your wrist, you wrap it around and you cinch it up. And when you're bench pressing or doing bicep curls or anything where your wrist is going to bend, this will help support your wrist. These I really noticed started to help as I started to get stronger and I was dumbbell pressing a lot of weight, um, well a lot of weight for me, um, my wrist kind of started to bother me, and ever since I started using these, my pain has pretty much gone away. So these were like three or four dollars at Walmart. You can get a lot nicer pair. I'd probably recommend you know going for like a ten or fifteen dollar pair. I've had these for a few months, but I definitely need some new ones. Um, an alternative to that would be a full glove. These also have a strap that goes all the way around them, um, so it pretty much is like that plus the glove. I don't like using these for like bench press and stuff just because my grip doesn't feel as natural as when I have my hands on the bar, but I like these a lot for like lat pull downs or rowing motions because you can hold onto the bar a lot better. Um, but these are kind of just an upgrade from those and then if you really had the money to go for Versa Grips would be probably the best product you could use. But um, these will support your wrists and help your grip strength so that you can pull more, focus more on your pulling with the lat pull down or whatever, like, um, I know for me, my hands would slip because they'd be getting sweaty, this prevents that, and it's not going to detract from your forearm strength or anything. A lot of people don't like straps because they say, you know, you should improve your grip strength or whatever. I'm not worried about my grip strength when I'm deadlifting, I'm worried about my deadlifting. Um, I don't use these for pulling motions, I do try and keep my forearms engaged in that, um, but like straight legged deadlifts, regular deadlifts, something where you're going to have a lot of weight on the bar, um, I just can't hold on anymore, um, but my back still has more in it, so using these, I can really focus on 
my back and my hamstrings and pulling a lot of weight rather than just holding onto the bar. And then separately, I could focus on doing forearm work if I feel I need to work on my forearm. Um, but wrist straps are a really great uh, tool to focus, isolate, and perform better on lifts. I know once I started using these, my deadlifts and my straight-legged deadlifts both went up pretty fast because I could hold the bar for longer without having to rest. Um, and my performance was really just focused on the deadlift rather than holding the bar. So these are a really good tool and don't let anyone tell you they're pussy straps or whatever. Deodorant, bro. Um, I don't, I get up in the morning and just go straight to the gym. I probably smell like crap. Uh, you know, you might get off work and go straight to the gym. You probably are going to smell like crap once you start sweating a little bit. So put on some deodorant and save everyone the struggle of avoiding you. Um, iPod. I don't know, not everyone seems to think they need music. I know for me it makes a huge difference if I have my iPod or not. Just because you don't have your iPod isn't a valid excuse not to work out. There's people that are like, oh, I forgot my iPod today, I'm not working out. That's a bunch of crap. But I feel like if I have these and they're blasting some music in my ears, they're a good way to get in the zone and really focus on lifting weights. And if I don't feel like I need them, I'll still put them in just because I'm not there to chit chat with people. I mean, I'm friendly in the gym. I tell people, hey, how's it going? But I just want to do a quick walk by, how are you today? I don't want to stand there and talk about everything that's happened in their life in the last week. I'm there to work out. So if you have headphones in, people generally don't try and start a huge conversation with you. That's a good trick. Okay, a shaker bottle or water bottle. Um, you know, when you are in the gym, you're probably going to start sweating a lot. Performance is going to suffer when you're dehydrated. So it doesn't have to be a shaker bottle, it could be a little crappy plastic water bottle, it could be a camel pack, it could be whatever. But you need to be drinking water, and when you're walking to the water fountain every few sets, sure you're getting some water in you, but if you have this, you're going to drink a lot more water. Um, I usually try and drink one of these before I go to the gym, and at least one while I'm working out. I generally drink more than that, especially on days like leg day or something, like this morning I did legs and lower back. Um, and I was sweating a lot, and I think I drank this thing probably two, maybe three times. Um, and that's good because as you get dehydrated, your performance is going to suffer, and we want to perform optimally in the gym. A pen, piece of paper. This morning I forgot my workout log, which kind of ticked me off, but luckily on leg day, I, um, I pretty much have my numbers memorized that I want to be hitting. But um, as you may have seen in my June goals video, I've been logging all my workouts, going in with a laid out piece of paper with what lifts I'm going to do and the numbers I need to hit to improve from last week and progressively overload. Um, today I forgot my workout log, so I still made sure, I just went to the front desk, I said, hey, can I borrow a piece of paper? Took my pen, wrote down what I could remember I wanted to do that day. Um, and then I wrote down the numbers I hit so I can still compare them to what I wanted to hit. And I had in mind what I wanted to hit. Like last week for deadlifts, I knew that I deadlifted 250 for three sets of five. So today I did 250 and I got it six times. So I, I upped it, I put a two and a half pound plate on the end. And I did 255 for two sets of five after that. So progressively always trying to get more one, one more rep or add a little bit more weight is the key to gaining muscle and getting stronger and improving over time. So to have numbers in front of you to know, hey, I deadlifted 200 pounds last week for six sets of three. If you're just gonna go in and do that again, you're not really bettering yourself. You wanna go in and you wanna push for a fourth rep or you wanna push to do 205 pounds or whatever to challenge yourself and progressively get better over time. Like I can think um, a couple weeks ago, I was doing 240 for sets of five on the deadlift. If I just had kept doing 240 each time, I wouldn't have been improving my lift or trying to improve my lift and I wouldn't have gotten 255 today. So get numbers written down and try to beat them every time you go in the gym. What not to bring into the gym? A cell phone. I know a lot of the time now our phone and our iPod are kind of intertwined, one piece of equipment, but sitting there and texting for two or three minutes between every set 
is going to give you a good amount of recovery time, but you're either going to be in the gym all freaking day or you're not going to get done what you should have got done. So if at all possible, leave the phone in your gym bag or in your car. I don't use my phone hardly ever, so it's not a problem for me. I have a piece of crap phone. Um, but if you are stopping and texting or looking up something on YouTube or whatever every in between every single set, you're going to take an hour just to finish one or two lifts. Um, where I was in the gym for probably two hours this morning, but I got like nine different more than nine different lifts done um and i was focused and i knew what my goal was my goal wasn't to see what was going on on facebook my goal was to kick my butt in the gym and so that's what i got done but you don't need distractions like this so leave your phone in your car if you need it for emergencies okay bring it in with you but don't sit there and text or play on it in between every set and just focus on the weights you're there for the weights you can text at home you're paying for a gym membership um, for a reason, you may as well use it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Leave me a comment about something maybe I could implement into my gym bag that you think would be useful. Um, or if you have any more questions, don't be afraid to ask. Like this, share it with someone, um, and push to be better every day. Have a great day, guys.